What's up guys? Left Burst here, and today I'm going to be doing my top five favorite attack type Beyblades. And am I the only one bothered by this? I just set up the setup thing, and uh, why is Longest on the bottom here, and Longest on the top here, and Valkyrie on the bottom here, and Valkyrie on the top here? That I don't know why OCD is just going crazy. Like, I gotta fix that. Like, I'm gonna do that right now, actually. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, okay, there we go, there we go. Okay, oof. Time to actually get the video started. Okay, so yeah, today I'm doing my top five favorite attack type. Beyblades. Now, you guys seem to really like my top five favorite Delta Beyblades in my ranking list. So I'm like, hey, let's do some more rankings. So, yeah, again, top five favorite uh, attack type Beyblades. And we still don't have the cool transition things. And Felix actually got internet back, so I'm gonna see if he can go back to editing my videos. Because let's be honest, Felix is like a god at editing videos. These videos look so much better when Felix is editing them. Anyway, so yeah, let's just get into the top five list. Now, attack types are again my second favorite Beyblade type type besides balance. I think we're just going to go in order from uh, the, for the later top five list, we're just going to order from my favorite type. So of course, balance is at the top, then probably attack, and then uh, stamina, then defense. I feel bad for defense. I mean, no one really, I know there's someone out there that likes defense, but most people, they, they don't like defense that much. It's usually their least favorite type. It's not that interesting. Anyway, so yeah, let's just get into the Beyblades. My number five Beyblade is... Killer Death Scyther, or the Death Scyther line in general, actually. So yeah, again, uh, I'm gonna be limiting this to one Beyblade per line. So that just means I can only have like one Beyblade per line. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna have Death Scyther at my number five. And I would usually have Dark Death Scyther at my number five, so a killer. But guess what? My Dark Death Scyther broke, but we don't talk about that. So yeah, I just really like the uh, Death Scyther one. I, I just think it, they look like really cool. Like look at this thing. And then I think the Killer Death Scyther has the best design. But I just think that the earlier Death Scythers are just so much better. And that's why I like the earlier Death Scythers better. But I don't have the earlier Death Scythers because they all break because they're useless trash. So the thing about the Death Scyther line is they were banned from WBO tournaments. They were banned from uh, Japan tournaments because they were so overpowered. And to me, they just look so cool with that black and that purple design. And just look at this thing. Look how evil it looks in that side. Oh my gosh, it looks awesome. And with this frame, this like ghostly frame, like, oh yeah, <laughs> back in the day with this thing first came out we named it Danny Phantom because it has like a D in there and it was like a phantom it was such a cool meme anyway so yeah I just really like the design choice and everything and it was so good the early death sensors were so good they got banned and it was horrible because they, they were so good but yet like every other launch a death sector would break let's like let's be honest guys it's tell me in the comments how many death sectors have you broken because I know that I broke my death sector like the week I got it and I was so mad because it was like one of my favorite days and I just broke it literally it ha it's so what's breaking it's so prone to breaking that's the word, yeah. It's like really competitive, but it breaks on the second launch, which makes you like buy multiples, and it's so bad. Anyway, so yeah, that's my number five. And it's only number five because again, it <laughs> it broke. My my death scyther, my dark death scyther broke, and that kind of like ruined it. Death scyther actually would have been. It was close to being my favorite bay. It was close to surpassing storm Spurgeon at the time, but then it broke. And I was like, okay, whatever. And so yeah, that's my number five. I kind of went on a tangent there, but that's basically gonna be the whole video. So guys, soon up, get ready for a bunch of like for you know, going on. A bunch so yeah, my number four, or my fourth favorite Beyblade, dang, we should really get Felix to edit these. We need those cool transition guys. My number four favorite attack Beyblade is Beast Behemoth. Now, Beast Behemoth is my number four. I mean, honestly, Beast Behemoth is my number four, not because it looks cool, because just look at this thing. This thing just doesn't have that cool design. And its owner in the anime, I think he was pretty cool. I forget his name, I think his name was Ben. Yeah, his, his name was Ben, you know, the Ben 10 kid. He, he wasn't really Ben 10 kid, but he was like a wild kid. He's like the kid you see on the playground, he's like jumping off like five feet from the playground on the ground and just like breaking all his bones. That, that's Ben right there. Okay, so and he his thing was that he like yelled like a beast and that's like why he has Beast Behemoth but he was a pretty cool he had a really cool design but Beast Behemoth the bait itself uh, I don't think it was that cool design wise and the gimmick in the anime was that it starts off pretty slow but later on battle it goes like really fast which it doesn't really work. It doesn't gain stamina in real life. like I don't even know where that gimmick came from but honestly it's not the 
Beyblades gimmick or the Beyblades look that makes me like it so much. It's just the nostalgia. I know it's Beyblade hasn't been around or Beyblade Burst hasn't been around, but I still get nostalgic from the earlier days before the channel where me and Jake used to just Beyblade and just have a lot of fun with Beyblades. So yeah, basically what we used to do, I remember when this came out, it was the most OP layer in the world. It was so OP. It was actually, it was. I don't even think it was ever really that competitive. Like it's an attack type layer, but it's extremely round and it's too edgy to have good stamina. It was never really that competitive, but for me and Jake, we didn't think, look at competitive. We did like whenever we battled, whichever bay like did the best, we thought was like the best bay ever. And according to us, this was the best bay ever. It was an extremely good bay on extreme, the ex heavy extreme. That was a that was the combo to go at the time. It was so good. It beat all our Beyblades. I think the only Beyblade that we could get, the only combo that we could get to beat it was like Neptune. Gravity Zephyr or something. We got to beat it, but that was the only one. And this Beyblade was so good. And with the, uh, what's it called? With the whole driver. Oh yeah, back in the day, I my stadium, I lost the top of the stadium. So I had to make, I had to glue cardboard on to make it look like a BB-10. And uh, it, the Beast Behemoth did really well in that stadium because we had this attack that we called it, the Ricochet Shot, because the whole driver was so crazy. It went around the stadium and like hit the, hit the cardboard and went back in the middle. It, it was like a rush or a jet shoot. It's just multiple jet suits. And it was so fun to watch. It was so OP. And that's why Beast Behemoth is my my number four Beyblade just because I think it's just so cool. I really like his attack to do it. It's really nostalgic to me. It's, it can't hold up to the Chozetsu base today, but it's just like, I don't know, it holds so many memories. So yeah, he's my number four Beyblade. Moving on to my third favorite Beyblade. Now, if you guys know, where, where are all the god base? Like, why are we going with this? And that I'm going to go on that trend. My third favorite Beyblade is Obelisk Odin. Now, of course, this isn't a god base. This isn't a Chozetsu base, but I just think Obelisk Odin even though it's not that good, it has kind of the beast behemoth kind of thing where it's kind of just like kind of circular and doesn't have like, it's not that good of an attack, but I just think that this thing looks so cool. Like look how clean this design is. I think this design looks awesome. And look at that driver. Oh my God. When this extreme driver came out. Okay. So I, the first extreme I got was on Excalibur. I got the Excalibur extreme and I was, I was a stupid kid guys. I was a stupid kid. When I first got Excalibur, I didn't know rubber could wear out. And I, I wasn't, it wasn't even that long. It was like two years ago. I was like 14 years old. you think I would be smarter. But I started launching my Excalibur on Bond Green. And I cringe so much when people do that now. But like back then, I thought it was normal. I was like, rubber can't wear out. And then I started realizing, wait a second. My Excalibur is not going that fast. I look at the tip. And the tip is like totally round. I totally wore out the rubber. So yeah, when I got Obelisk Odin in the new Extreme. Oh, it was so crazy. I praised this Extreme. It was such a good Extreme driver. But now it's kind of worn out. But before before, it was like crazy good. Anyway, so yeah, I just really like the design. And in the anime, he almost beat Shu. The owner of Atlas Golden, I forget his name. Uh, I think in Hasbro, it's called uh, Omni Odex or, or something. But the owner, he could like hear when the Beyblade was gonna burst based off the clicks. And that's just crazy. He has such a cool design. I remember him, like seeing him in the opening theme. Now I got into Beyblade right when the Beyblade anime first were, uh, was uh what's it called when the first when the Beyblade anime first started in the Japanese so I saw like the Japanese raw version and I remember just seeing like episode two and looking at the theme song and seeing that guy the owner of obviously when chewing gum and blowing uh bubbles and thinking he was such a cool character and he was just he was just awesome I was like waiting I was like is this gonna be the main boss of Beyblade and then you saw Xander just like ate the camera and I'm like whoa anyway so yeah uh I just really like this design it's not even like it's that good I just really like the extreme driver I really really good sign. So yeah, that's why it's my number third favorite Beyblade. Moving on to my second favorite Beyblade. My second favorite Beyblade, or my second favorite attack type Beyblade is Nightmare Longinus. Now, the Longinus line, honestly, I know there's a Chozetsu version of Nightmare Longinus, Bloody Longinus, but I just think Nightmare Longness is the better out of the three Longinus. It really expands on the Lost Longinus design, and I feel like it just has a cooler design than Bloody Longness. Like to me, I just feel like Nightmare Longness is cooler. I mean, Bloody it has Nightmare Longness has this own thing. Like it has a crazy gimmick that no other bay has. Well, I guess sort of other bays like Beef and Culkin, but has like it clicks and it gets stronger. But this one, it just like it looks so much cooler. It has such a cool gimmick, and it has this thing where it doesn't have a disc. It's the only Beyblade to be released, or the first Beyblade to be released that has only two parts so far, at least. At least maybe like in the future, there's gonna they're gonna release like. 
like this crazy new day that's it's only one part or something, which is gonna be crazy. Anyway, so yeah, it's the only Beyblade to be, to be released with only two parts, and it kind of got taken away when it turned to um, Bloody Longness, which is kind of weird. I don't know why they would take that away. It was like something special to Nightmare Longness, and I think Nightmare Longness has a really cool design. And again, Nightmare Longness holds a lot of nostalgia for me. I know I'm talking a lot about nostalgia, and it hasn't even been like a year or two. But when we first started our channel, me and Jake, our first mascot was actually Lost Longness. That was our first mascot, and that was because we named the channel, of course, Left First, and the only Left in Beyblade at the time was Lost Longness. We didn't have no uh, Drain Fafners, we didn't have no Sprig Nut Requiems, no Legend Sprig Nuts, or uh, Arc Bahamuts. It was only uh, Lost Longness, and I remember people like didn't even think. Uh, that a last spin burst bay was possible due to like the locking mechanism, but they made it happen They made it happen. It wasn't really that hard. You just click it the other way Anyway, so yeah, uh, I just think it looks really cool And I really like the driver this red driver is really good really competitive driver and has a lot of life after death Anyway, so yeah, my camera is moving. Let's move that back over there So yeah, that's why it's my second favorite Beyblade. I mean moving on to my number one favorite Beyblade Now I know I might not sound that hype as I was for the bounce type Beyblade top 10 That's because I just like bounce types that much more. I just think the balance types just look the coolest and just have the coolest gimmicks and just are the coolest. Anyway, so moving on to the number one. I didn't really think this Beyblade was my number one attack type Beyblade until I made this list. I was like, wait, I thought I really liked attack types, but like going on here, I guess I didn't like them that much. They're still my second favorite type, but the number one really surprised me. Anyway, so my number one uh, attack type Beyblade is... The Valkyrie line. Now, I couldn't pick between, like, which Valkyrie I wanted, because I just really like the Valkyrie line, okay? I don't know why. The Valkyrie line just, honestly, it's just the coolest line to me. Now, I don't have the single layer Valkyrie. Actually, I did have the single layer Valkyrie, but it kind of broke. Like, the teeth kind of just, like, were horrible, and it somehow, like, just broke. Like, the, the plastic broke off, so I don't really have that anymore. But yeah, just the Valkyrie line, it's my favorite line. Why? I... I, I don't know, I just think it has like the coolest designs, like the design choice, and of course you follow Bolt throughout the anime, it's really cool to see him like grow, although he didn't have like too much character development, it's more like, hey, I was really bad, and hey, I'm really good now, but yeah, that's basically Bolt's character development, I don't think his character changed at all throughout the anime, but it was just cool to see him like unlock Valkyrie and stuff, and I think, honestly, I was gonna put Victory Valkyrie as my number one favorite, but I don't really use Victory Valkyrie that much. I'm more of using uh, Winning Valkyrie, so I was like kind of split between those. But and I honestly, I don't even know why I have God Valkyrie here. God, I don't really like God Valkyrie that much. I think I I really like Strike God Valkyrie with the Ultimate Reboot Driver, but just stop God Valkyrie. I don't really like that much. So get that thing out of here. But these two, I really like these two Valkyries, and it's because of their tips. Their tips are just so crazy. It's just so fun to just watch the variable driver like move around and be crazy and be all that and the, oh my gosh the volcanic driver is crazy too but the only reason i don't like uh winning valkyrie is because of the 12 disc it literally shreds all my Beyblades. it's so bad i'm breaking all my Beyblades. it's because i'm bursting against uh winning valkyrie so yeah and both of them i just think their designs are just really clean i honestly i kind of like <laughs> Victory Valkyrie designs. Honestly, I think the dual layer designs just look the cleanest out of all of them. Like, look at this. The god layer designs look cool, but I think they're kind of over designed. I kind of like the classic dual layer design. Well, not classic. I guess single layer is more classic. But the classic <laughs> dual layer design were just really clean and really nice. I remember seeing these on Amazon being like, oh my gosh, that looks amazing. I don't want to pay 30 bucks for those or 50 bucks for them, though. When's oh, I didn't even include Excalibur. I don't even think Excalibur. I I really like Excalibur, but I think Excalibur might be number six. I didn't like Zeno Excalibur that much. I think Zeno Excalibur might be my number six, but uh. Yeah, when Zeno Excalibur came out, oh my gosh, it was so expensive, guys. You would go on Amazon. I remember going on Amazon for a pre-order to get Zeno Excalibur, and it was like sixty dollars. And I was like, what the heck? It was like more than it was more than Spring and Requiem, which is crazy because it didn't even come with any good parts. It literally just came with a sword launcher. It was literally just extremely hype because it looked cool. Anyway, so yeah, uh, I think the Valkyrie line is my favorite line just because of how it performed and how cool it looked, and just seeing both throughout anyway. So yeah, that's my top five. Let's let's.
let's go through a little rundown again. Of course, the Valkyrie line, number one, I couldn't pick between those guys. Number two is probably uh, Nightmare Longness. Number three, Obelisk Odin. Number four, Beast Behemoth. And number five is going to be Killer Death Scyther. So yeah, remember to rate, comment, subscribe. If you guys want to see more top five lists like this, if you guys want to... <laughs> I'm stumbling on my words. You know, when you talk for 10 minutes straight, you, your mouth gets kind of dry and you just can't talk anymore. Anyway, so uh, yeah, if you guys want to see uh, top five stamina, Beyblade things or whatever, or top five defense things or whatever, or the whatevers, or um, maybe I'll do like top five bladers from the anime. Like, if you guys want to see that, leave a like, leave a comment, do all that stuff. Anyway, so, yeah, remember to rate, comment, subscribe. See you guys later. Left burst out.